Hello, I'm Michelle Brenner, Head of Education at the Norton Simon Museum, and today I'd like to take a closer look at Women Ironing, painted by French artist Edgar Degas in 1875 and 6, and reworked by him in the mid-1880s. Taking the time to explore a single artwork like this one in depth can help us to better understand and empathize with people in very different circumstances from our own, allowing us to acknowledge our shared humanity in the face of external differences. In the 19th century, the population of Paris sharply increased, and large numbers of laundresses were needed to collect, wash, iron, and return people's clothes. As a painter of modern Paris, Degas depicted laundresses many times, including in the Norton Simon's smaller painting, The Laundress, from 1873. And he painted four versions of this composition alone. In this painting, we see two ironers at work. The woman on the right hunches over, pushing the weight of her body down onto the heavy iron, while her exhausted co-worker stretches and yawns, a bottle of wine in her right hand. Wine drinking was encouraged by employers as it was thought to help the laundress's work. Take a moment to take the pose of the woman on the right, and then the woman on the left. How does it feel? Imagine doing these actions all day in a cramped, sweltering room. The hot, humid air led to inflammation of the abdomen and throat and frequently lung disease. The work was monotonous, and although they worked as much as 15 to 18 hours each day, the wages were so low they barely covered basic living expenses. Now let's take a moment to look at the overall composition. Degas has cropped the painting so tightly that one of the laundress's arms is cut off by the frame. Ironed and starched shirts sit on the table before them, and ironed sheets, tablecloths, and curtains hang behind them, limiting our view of the room and giving the painting a claustrophobic feeling. Imagine if Degas had painted a broader scene with more background and more people. How do you think this would change the way you see and relate to these laundresses? Note how Degas uses warm cream and rust tones for the laundress's flushed skin, blouses, and reddish hair, as well as the floor of the room. These warm tones are balanced by the cool, almost metallic blues and whites of the linens that surround them. This restricted palette of warm rust and creams against dull whites and blues gives a sense of the heat and repetitiveness of the setting and the work. The edges of the forms are soft, blurred rather than crisp, and the paint has a rough pastel-like texture. These blurred and rough edges give the impressions of a room saturated with hot steam and mist. Now let's take a closer look at the laundresses themselves. Their faces are not those of specific people, and their hair and clothing are so similar that they could almost be the same person. Note their bare arms and chest. Respectable women of this period would have been fully covered at all times, but the suffocating heat in the ground floor shops where the ironing was done made staying fully dressed unbearable. Because of the heat, the doors of the shops were often kept open to let out the hot air, and passers-by would see the women working semi-dressed and judge them for their lack of modesty. Degas' paintings of laundresses were popular with his upper-class contemporaries, and the majority of his pictures featuring the subject were sold during his lifetime. What do you think the people who bought these paintings saw in them? Women Ironing gives us a brief but intimate glimpse into the daily life of working class women in 19th century Paris. When we spend time with an artwork like this painting, we can imagine what life might have been like for someone else in different circumstances and how their frame of reference might differ from our own. I hope you enjoyed this closer look at the painting, and I encourage you to apply this approach of slowing down and considering the experiences of others in art as well as in history, on the news, and in your own daily life.